Some of the students today do not remember when Sputnik launched, <laughs> I but I do. Remember. Do you remember? No. No, I didn't think you would, but you know why? Why? You weren't launched. <laughs> I wasn't launched. Yeah, it was nope. in 1957. I was not launched. And I was nine years old. Yeah? Yeah. You remember it real well? And I remember it really, really well. It was on the front page of the newspaper. This is a brand new moon, and I'm reading all about it. I could read. And so I went out in front of my house, and I watched and watched. <laughs> and I never saw it go by. Oh. But it's, it was exciting to think that you could actually have another moon mm -hmm. going around the Earth. It yeah, just, just it's something it's, my little head. A brand new moon. It's kind of neat. Wow. Yeah. I had a friend that lived right next to a large radio station, and he had a little shop out there, and he was trying to work, and his, his flashlight batteries were real dim, and he kept shaking it and trying to get it to work. And so we went in his house, and we got a fluorescent tube, and we hooked a wire on one end of the fluorescent tube. I made a little coil, hooked it on the other end. We took it out in the shed by the transmitter, and it glowed pulling power from the big transmitter in the field next door. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right, but now we need to get back on satellites, don't we? Okay, so another science fair project Elon Musk is working on is called Starlink. Mm -hmm. we, we saw the little train that Johnny showed us of the Starlink satellites going across the sky. And he now has about 7,000 of those satellites in orbit around the U.S. Mm -hmm well, around the U.S. and the world. And they are, they're quite interesting. When he launches these satellites, he does about 30 at a time. About 30 go up in a rocket, and they're kind of mashed together like pizzas. Mm -hmm. And he releases them out into space, and then the antennas unfold, and then they start doing their job. An interesting thing, the, the rocket that puts these into orbit takes them up just over 200 miles. It's quite a ways, but it's kind of a low orbit, gets them in orbit, and then as they separate out, they get in those chains and they get going, and they start going faster and faster and faster, and as they do, they go to a higher and higher orbital. They get up to about 342 miles above the Earth, which is about 100 miles higher than the International Space Station. Mm. And that's, that's where they live. I am really impressed with the fact of how he propels those. When you, when you have a rocket ship blast off from the ground, it is able to get lift by shooting gas out the tail of the rocket, hot gas shooting out at a very, very fast velocity. Uh, Mr. Newton had a law that says to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you shoot gas out the tail of the rocket, it's gonna push the rocket up. And if you shoot it out really fast, like with a big fire, shooting it out, well then it can give you quite a bit of propulsion and you can get a rocket up in the air. But as you're taking off, you're consuming fuel and pretty soon you're gonna run out of fuel. Mm. When we built the space shuttle, the fuel that they chose to run the space shuttle was hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, and they had to carry liquid oxygen. That's where those big tanks are mm. that were connected to the space shuttle. And so you're actually shooting water vapor at the bottom of the engine at a very high temperature, and that's what propelled it. But pretty soon you're gonna run out of fuel. Now these satellites that Elon's making, he wants to keep those in orbit for about five years. And they have to, first of all, start their journey at 235 miles above the Earth, and then they have to accelerate faster and faster and get up to a higher orbit of 342 miles above the Earth. And that takes fuel and it takes a long time. And then he wants to fly them and keep them exactly in the right positions for five years. Well, how do you get enough fuel to do that? And he did something really, really, really remarkable. He used a type of a drive, an engine to power them, called an ion thrust engine. 
And so this engine shoots ions out of the back of the engine to propel it instead of burning chemical or mm. shooting chemical out. And the ion thrust is, is something that NASA has been talking about and even building engines for a long time. But this is the first time that it really got widely deployed. Mm -hmm.